Alrighty folks, I uh, finally got everything home here from the 57 Bel Air. And I worked on a few little things here and there. Got our radiator support. Got all that stuff separated. And I uh, had to get that bracket off. But uh, got these uh, fresh air vents. Got all that stuff off of it. On, uh, well, one of the fenders anyway. On the uh, passenger side fender. And I uh, was able to get... The splash guard, got all that stuff off. I got to go through and got a few places that I might have to cut that bolt off and get that off. But uh, believe it or not, the thing is actually pretty solid, so pretty cool. But uh, pretty surprising. But uh, I went in on this fender a little bit and tried to beat that back out a little. And uh, I'm not sure. This fender is pretty much about shot, really. But, uh, at the top of it all in there is just completely shot. So, it got a little blurry. And then the whole bottom of it is pretty much shot. They make patch panels for the bottom. So, that could be fixed. And then, might be able to save it. And then up there, might beat it back out a little bit. But, uh, we are missing, unfortunately, one of the gold pieces that goes right there. I'm all look and see. It might be laid on the ground somewhere down there. I don't know. But, um... So this is where it's getting a little interesting. So this is where our build is kind of truly taking off here a little bit. And uh, this is the start and the beginning of the Frankenstein right here. And, uh, you know, again, you can call it what you want. It might be Frankenstein. I don't really care. But we're trying to save a 57 Plymouth here. And, uh, you know, this is what it's about. So the headlight buckets, I've removed this one out of the bell air here i was able to remove all that out and uh they're actually still pretty solid so um i went on and got that removed and then i uh, started fitting it here i'm going to, have to buy a headlight hardware kit and everything to you know make sure it's going to work and uh well the spring is all rusted out oh, look, it popped off right there <laughs> But that's all right. But I can buy all that. No big deal. But the bucket itself will fit just fine. It's a little tight. So I might have to trim just a little bit. There we go. But uh, it does fit in there. I might have to do a little bit of trimming on our Plymouth fender. Just a little bit on some of these edges through here. But other than that, I think it'll work. I mean, headlights are pretty much headlights. I don't really think it's going to be too big of a deal. This one's just pretty, pretty solid. So, and it's still got the factory paint on it. It's got a lot of undercoating on it, too. But, uh, I think it'll work. So, I had to, unfortunately, had to grind some of the screws on it off to get it off the Bel Air fender. A little unfortunate there. But I uh, was able to save our ground kind of a little bit. But I'm not worried about it. All the wiring I'm going to replace anyway. I just was trying to get it off without disturbing it too much. But it will fit. And you know, it's a little snug. But again, keep in mind. You know, this is... We're going to have to tweak it. But it will work. There you go. Let me get this in here. I have to it's kind of hard to do with one hand but it will go in there i might trim it just a little bit i'm not going to force it in there and uh we're going to go ahead and get this other side apart over here and figure out what's what they're just regular seven inch headlights nothing special and this is t3 kind of showed that in the other video but uh this this one's actually pretty nice it's not pitted all up so it's really nice so I'm hoping I can just take the headlight. I'm going to buy new headlights later on, not right now. But uh, I'll use these headlights. I don't care if they work or not. I have one. I'll dig up another one I'm somewhere. I got another one somewhere. And mock everything up. And I'll get the bezels for the Plymouth. And we'll see what's what with it. But um, it should work. Because it's the same size headlight as a 57 Plymouth. It's a 7 inch headlight. Nothing special. So the only thing I'm kind of concerned about is how far, you know, forward and back it sits. I don't want it to sit deeper, so to speak, in there. But then again, it might. I'm not sure. But um, we'll figure out what's what. So here's some of the interesting stuff. So here's a comparison here. This is where y'all are going to start seeing some of the comparison stuff. 
and um like i said that will fit i'm just going to trim that up just a little bit the fender's right so i gotta work on this fender all oh, this is going to have to come back hard anyway but uh believe it or not this is the plymouth bumper right here and um that's a bell air bumper obviously but believe it or not they are very very close in width so i think it's going to work just fine and uh, it's a few differences the bumper bolts on straight onto the frame this way if you look down there i'll help you kind of see that bolts flush to this this what's left of the frame horn there on the plymouth and then it bolts to the side of the frame rail on the bel air one that way so i think we can make it work i really do so but that's crazy but the width of the bumper is really close so um i don't think it's gonna be a big deal this bumper this bel air bumper i think it's gonna actually clean up pretty decent so i will clean it up but um it is a nice original bumper and a little tweak i think going on right there or something going on there but um i think we can actually take it license plate bracket and we'll transfer it over to our plymouth Vallis and i'll uh, use that but this is going to be really nice this is a pretty cool comparison here but uh on the 57 bel air to uh 57 plymouth so we're using the bel air to save a plymouth but uh, I'm gonna work on this a little bit. This side has all three, so that's pretty cool. What's left of them, anyway? But uh, I'll have to find one more. Somebody out there's got one. Let me know. Again, it's not really worried about it. But this fender is definitely saveable. So it's right on the bottom, but they make patch panels for them. No big deal there. But um, it is missing the trim, unfortunately. But no big deal there. But yeah, this is. We'll start fitting some of the stuff up and seeing what's what with it so this will be pretty fun so but i'm glad i was able to get this front clip off at car got both fenders off and uh it's pretty pretty cool so um i like it and uh exciting so i'm gonna try and beat this fender out a little bit more and try and save it if i can but it's pretty well beat so, I mean, honestly, if, this would be a good fender for, like, just a daily driver or something. But I think I can probably straighten it out enough to make it decent, but it's still not going to be right. But this is what I've been working on, and it's pretty crazy because when you look at some of this Plymouth stuff, like, if you look at the width of this down here on this lip, and you compare it to, like, the Bel Air, it's pretty crazy how it's almost the same. I mean, it's not exact, but it's pretty wild. I thought it might be a little wider, actually. Yeah, I guess the only difference is a little wider. Yeah, just a little bit, but it's pretty crazy, though. And it almost looks like this curve. It's not exact, obviously, but I got a similar curve where it kind of curves back here a little bit, comparing it to that. I mean, it's not exact. Of course, this fender is sitting on its nose, too, so I'm going to but obviously it would sit you know, more like that so curves back a little bit compared to that so that's pretty interesting but yeah just trying to work on this stuff a little bit and uh i will save these finishers and uh you know we'll save them for something but uh it's gonna be pretty cool pretty cool but so this is going to be a, something totally different. Nobody, I know it ain't nobody else going to do this, but this is why this has been pre-thought out for quite a while. And, uh, you know, now that y'all kind of starting to see this stuff in the, and uh, on video here, and kind of seeing it as a reality, then, uh, you know, y'all kind of, now y'all kind of see why I'm doing this. I mean, the width of the bumper is really close. And, uh, you know, it's not exact, I know, but that's good, though, because that means the frame rails are fairly close. I know they're not exact, I know that, but I do have the frame charts, so. But, uh, I think we'll get a much higher outcome building it the way I want to build it, so. Pretty cool. And, uh, this is a little special video, too. And, uh, I would like to, uh, take this time to thank somebody. 
and uh, thanks to Base Special out there for going through the extreme effort of finding me a V. This is a real one here, and I really want to thank that person out there, so this is pretty cool. So that is a real one right there. And I'm pretty happy and tickled to death with that. And that's one, I believe it was off a of four-door Belvedere. And then this one right here is actually off a, uh, I think it was a, maybe a plaza, I can't remember. But this one, they have actually, a fun little fact about these right here, is they actually have three different versions of these for a 58. This is a one-year only 58 Plymouth grill bracket and emblem so it's a one year only thing and they actually had three different versions of this and uh the one this has nothing to do with christine i don't care about christine this is just straight you know plymouth stuff so um the first one we had it does not have holes if we looked right in here there is no holes right there so there's no drilled holes this is for a six cylinder car but however if we looked on the back there and there the bracket was already set up in case it could be drilled for holes there and there so this is a real v8 one well they're both real but the same thing so if we sit these down and compare them side by side they both have the holes right there on this piece they do and then it's just not drilled on this side so that's a little comparison thing right there pretty cool but uh it's just not drilled for there and there so but yeah we come down one two three four so and then one two three that'd be right this one right here so but yeah that's pretty cool so um this is a real v emblem right here i actually think it's made out of stainless I think it might be aluminum, I'm not quite sure. But both of them have TH on them right here. This TH, if we flip it, they only go one way, so you can only install it one way. Here's TH. And this one has got TH as well. Flip it around. TH right there. But um, this is a real 58 Plymouth one. and. It actually is three versions of this, believe it or not. And like I was saying, is this is the six cylinder one. There is no holes right in here. This is the V8 one. And then they actually have another one that is a Fury only one that still has this V, but the V is this color. Kind of the uh, stainless uh, kind of color. And then... Uh, the uh, backing plate, like you see right here, is actually gold. So it's just opposite. I think it's a Fury only thing. But uh, really, really hard to find. Very hard to find. But um, I'm tickled diff I got it. So these are very hard to find. They're very overpriced. But uh, I'm so glad I found it. But they're very, very hard to find. You will not. That's not something you will find, you know, overnight. But uh, I got lucky and I was able to uh, find this bracket, believe it or not. And I got lucky on that too. And uh, I'm going to thank the person out there, very special person. And uh, I'm going to thank that person from the kindness of my heart from going through the effort and finding these because these are extremely hard to find, whether it's a six cylinder or a regular V8 one. But they are extremely, extremely hard to find. So I'm tickled to death with it. It's a really beautiful, beautiful piece here. Very rare. And uh, you probably will never, you know, you won't see something like that every day. But uh, I don't think anybody really has made a video on that, at least from what I can tell on YouTube here. So I just wanted to make that video. And uh, these are really crazy expensive. I went through won't get into too many details but i went through a bad experience and i was trying to actually take and recreate the v emblem and i actually made a couple of them they're a work in progress 
actually made this one right here and then I made this one as well and then I was gonna paint them gold like that I actually made a bracket for the back I gotta drill the holes in it and then I was gonna make my own because wasn't sure if I would ever find that one and then just you know, make my own painted gold might not be exact but close enough you know but um so I'd started making a couple of these and uh, I'm still gonna probably make them but I'm gonna probably tweak these just a little bit mine are made out of regular metal so uh, I'll probably make some of them up and uh, we'll figure out something on it but uh it's pretty cool though but I was actually not too far off so I was not too far off so the angle was just a little bit wider on mine but pretty pretty crazy so this is awesome so just want to show this and uh pretty awesome pretty awesome so but i got a six cylinder one got a uh regular v8 one and then uh eventually i doubt I ever will I'd like to find a fury one but it's really the same thing. It's just opposite colors. But uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So, again, thank you, thank you. Really tickled to death with it. So, very hard to find. Very hard to find. You will not find those anywhere. So, really thank you. So, again, I'm going to get back at it to uh, this Plymouth stuff here. And I'll have to tweak that and probably do a little trim and get that to fit good. And then uh, we'll go from there. And uh, we'll take the headlight out. Don't care if it works or not. We can use it to mock stuff up. And we'll take that and then fit it in there. And I'm going to, again, I'm building a 57 Plymouth Savoy. That's what this car is going to be. I do not want anything to do with Christine. And uh, again, you know, I've said it over and over again. I love the movie, don't get me wrong, but the movie is way overrated. But, um, so I am not, I want to make that very clear, I am not building a Christine but you know the thing is too that's face it a little bit you know it's pretty cool to have certain things like this as well pretty awesome so but um i mean when you build a 57 58 plymouth i mean you got to have one of them it's it's part of it <laughs> but um but again like i said in all seriousness is I'm going to build a 57 Plymouth Savoy, and that's what we're going to do. And, you know, the reason for doing the Bel Air to Plymouth build here is, you know, nothing is available for them cars for the Plymouth here. Nothing is available. But we come to our Bel Air, everything's available. Just, well, I won't say everything, but we'll say 80% of everything is available. Now, granted, you could get mechanical parts for a Plymouth. You know, don't get me wrong, like, you know, pistons and the rings and gaskets and stuff for the brakes. And, you know, I'm sure you can find a few things for a torque flight or power flight, you know, things like that. But, you know, you're going to pay more money for it. But me personally, this has been pre-thawed out since 2015. And I always want to take a 57 Bel Air. I love a 57 Bel Air. I have nothing against a 57 Bel Air. I love a 57 Bel Air. One day, I'm, that's why I'm going to save these fenders and all this stuff. And when I find a 57 Bel Air that I want to restore then you know i'll go that route with it and i'll have good parts so none of this the 57 bell air stuff is going to be going to waste on uh you know the hood and fenders and all that stuff so but uh so i just want to point that out but uh this is pretty cool though to actually see comparison of stuff like this and uh be cool if i think i wish the bell air had the bullets and all uh, the little rubber bullets in the bumper, but it doesn't. But I'm going to clean that bumper up. I'll make a video on that. I'm going to clean it up. I'll just rough clean it up and make a video of it. But uh, our Plymouth bumper is really nice. So pretty cool. But you'll never probably ever see this on any other YouTube channel. But we're taking, again, a 57 Bel Air. And we're going to use that car as our donor car to save our Plymouth here. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. And, uh... I really don't care if it is Frankensteining. I don't really care because I'm going to build the car away. I want to build it. So, But I'm gonna, on that note, we're going to go ahead and end the video here. And there will be more videos to come, hopefully here soon. We'll have the Bel Air home. And we can take in, uh, you know, this build can really start taking off here soon. So 
but I'm glad I pulled this fender off because I really don't think if I pulled that car out I think it would have damaged the fender and tore it all to pieces because this fender is too nice it's really nice right in here so granted the bottom is rotted out but I didn't want to you know that tree to rub it and just go all the way down the side of this fender and tear all the pieces so that's why I pulled all this stuff off I don't like yanking a car straight out and then doing more damage than what's necessary so but uh, i much rather pull this fender off and spend the extra time doing that and replace the bottom of the fender than to sit there and throw a chain on the car and yank it out and then crease this whole fender and just ruin it but uh and the same way with this fender i mean granted yeah the whole top is mashed down a little bit but uh, i don't know if a tree fell on or what it's probably what happened lord knows but again, you know, it's the same concept. I don't want to create more damage than what's already there. This fender is actually still usable, in my opinion. You could throw a bottom in it, shave the antenna off. And if you're really desperate enough, you know, you could save this fender. You know, if somebody had another fender that was really rotted down there, but it was good up here, you could cut that section out and then weld a new piece in and you have one good fender. You know, it's always better to save the original sheet metal than it is to throw away money on reproduction junk that's made overseas because that stuff does not fit right i've been through it and i've been through that with my chevelle and i would much rather have a fender like this it might be crushed in a little bit but at least the gaps will be right you know for the most part now granted it might not be right in this area between the hood and the fender but i'd rather deal with that than it be huge gaps all over the place you know so all right i'm gonna end the video here i will see y'all later and i'll th hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and i'm trying to get 2,000 subscribers so let's help this channel grow and again you know let's just try five killer at it again i hope you all enjoy the videos it's seven plymouth